he's hip. You looking good anyway. So, I mean, you know, the outside, you got that whooped. Darling, I don't see a uh, any markers. I don't know where they are or whatever. Um, but what I want you to do is get your Bible and um, turn to the book of Galatians. And we want to talk about what we've been talking about, and uh, we've identified the problem, and that is is the believer's uh, uh, faith. What he has placed his faith in. It's necessary not that I just believe. And sometimes, haven't we asked people that? We ask you, do you believe? Well, that's good. But it's very important what you believe. It, it is. Uh, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so I think, Mother Bland, that we have had scores of sincere people that have been misled. And that's evident by what went on in Guyana uh, years ago with the guy, what was his name, Jim Jones? Those folks... Jaleesa, they, they believe to such an extent that they gave their lives. And they gave their lives sincerely, Sister Bugs, by what they believed. So then, um, it's my mission. The Bible says that God gave some apostles, prophets, uh, evangelists, pastors, teachers, and then the purpose of it was uh, for the for perfecting of the saints, uh, for their edifying, for their building up. And so I believe that a pastor teacher was given uh, for the purpose of perfecting the saint. Now, what, in what area would a saint need perfecting? Well, we are body, soul, and spirit. We have a body that's uh, not going to make it. We have a body, Brother Jeff, that no matter how beautiful that it looks, time going to take it down. Time is its enemy. Time is our enemy. And so we, we have a soul and a spirit that's in our body. And so God has promised us a new body, so we cannot perfect this body. I think that that's been some of the uh, era of the Pentecostal church. And uh, today you can't hardly tell the difference between the Pentecostal church and the Baptist church. I think the Pentecostal church did so well. Uh, they, got, uh, they, they, they became very popular. Thank you, honey. They became very popular and, uh, you know, great numbers and great churches and raised a lot of money that the people are copycats. And I think that the Baptists began to copy the Pentecostals, and they even called themselves Bapticostals, I believe. They had the movement down in uh, 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 New Orleans with uh, Bishop Morton, uh, full gospel Baptist. Uh, and they taught and they teach people such things as, if you are saved, then your salvation covers your body. And so therefore... Uh, you should not be sick. Or if you are sick, then you're going to be healed because they go back to an Old Testament scripture where it talks about in Isaiah 53 where by his stripes we were healed. And so then they take that and tell them that you are healed. Uh, and so then if you have enough faith, then whatever disease that you're suffering from, then uh, it, will, it will be gone. And then they use, for example, what happened in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, how Jesus went about healing all manner of diseases. Well, the problem is, is that you're not rightly dividing the word of truth. First of all, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, for the most part, is Old Testament because the New Testament cannot come in force until after the death of the testator. I don't care how much Mother Brewer is left for you in my will. You cannot get anything out of my will until I die. 
And so the New Testament was sealed by the blood of Jesus. It was bought. And so now, until Jesus died, uh, the, te the New Testament was not in force. So now, Jesus came upon the earth. It had been prophesied that a king would come, a Messiah. And he came upon the earth in order to show Israel that your king is here. But by Matthew, the 12th chapter, they had rejected the king. They said, uh, they told Pilate, they said, we will not have this man to rule over us. Let his blood be upon us. And so Israel rejected their king. So uh, what, how would he show people that he was the Messiah? He had to do the things that the Messiah would do. He had to exhibit what the kingdom would be like. When Jesus comes, Crystal, and rules a thousand years upon the earth, which is in Revelation 20, there will be no sickness. There, there will be no, no type of animosity. The lion will be able to lay down with the lamb. He, that, Satan will be taken off the earth, Brother Carl Ray, and he will be bound for a thousand years, and there will be perfect peace and harmony upon earth. And he came demonstrating that he was the, he, he was, uh, the king that was to come. But they rejected him. So, because we don't know how to rightly divide the word, we take that for ourselves. And when we are not healed and when our bodies do, do not reflect what we've been told, we're confused and we begin to make excuses for God. And we begin to condemn people and say, people are not, you don't have a faith, that's why you're not healed. But this body is going back to the dust and is steadily deteriorating. So any perfection that God was talking about that the ministry was supposed to uh, bring forth does not deal with the body, but it deals with your soul. Because when God saves you, Mother Nun, he gives you he, your spirit, you're spiritually awakened and you're spiritually alive. Ephesians 2, go to Ephesians 2 real, for me real quick. I found this out, Brother Carl Ray, that if you can begin to think right, you can live right. I found this out also, my sister, that no matter how good your intentions are, if you're not going in the right direction, you're going to end up in the wrong place. So then good intentions is not good enough. But it takes humility in order to get instructions. Because sometimes you want to be right so bad, that you won't humble yourself to hear the truth. Ephesians, the second chapter says, and you have he quickened. You see, when God saves us, he, he, he makes us alive. Some things, Mother Nun, that you just didn't understand before you got saved. After you get saved, you hadn't gone to seminary. You hadn't studied Greek or Hebrew. But all of a sudden, it's all so clear to you. And the reason is, is that you were dead spiritually. See, man has a spirit and a soul which are intertwined. So, uh, they're both invisible. That's the invisible part of a person. And he says, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Wherein in time past, what time past? Before God saved you. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world. I don't care what family you born in. You know, we all like to get brag about what family we came out of. But you come out of Adam's family. And when, no matter what you house you come out of, we, we just got through talking to our baby just a minute ago. We asked him, we said, but Deborah said, say, you're a liar in a minute, won't you? He said, well, it's a part of my career. A liar, a drop of a hat. Now, now, where did it come from? We didn't teach him to lie. In fact, we taught him the opposite. But the, the Bible says, when in time past, you walked according to the course of this world. And that's what makes it so, so bad in organized religion because what they're going to do is, Brother Jeff Dyer, is that they're not going to allow God to be in charge. If I'm pastoring the church and we got a large membership and the money coming in, I, I'm, my, my son getting ready to come pastor. We getting ready to pass this on just like e, Eli and his sons. <laughs> we getting ready to pass this on. This is the family business. This is how we make it. We pay our bills through the church. You see? And, and, and it's really sad 
Because if you go back, the Bible says that God gave. You see, a true uh, pastor, a true teacher, a true evangelist is, is a gift from God. You can't buy it. You can't pay for it. Yet God gives to you, and it's for a purpose. It's for the perfecting of the saints. And what we're talking about is what area needs perfecting. My spirit doesn't need perfecting. My body doesn't need perfecting. It's my soul. And my soul is made up of my mind, my will, and my emotions. You could be saved and your mind still messed up. And the reason is, is because you have spent more time over here than you have over here. And another reason is, is that good teaching is very rare. It's, it's very rare that, that I will get the truth, Brother George King. And the thing about the truth is, is that w when you get it, you know it. W when you get it, you know it. Have you ever just been talking to somebody and you say, you know what? That's the truth. That, that, you know, you, you just hadn't seen it like that. But they, you know what? That's the truth. And Jesus said the truth will make you free. So the Bible says, he says, when you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. You see, when you get saved, you don't have Satan's spirit no more. Because the Bible says that any man, if you have not the spirit of Christ, you are none of his. So, so why is it that, that you still sometimes act like Satan even though you are saved and got Christ's spirit? Well, the reason is explained in Romans, the sixth chapter. He says the old man has been crucified. You know, sometimes we say, that's that old man. The old man been crucified. He's been crucified. You see, it's our mind and what we believe. If you believe that the old man is still alive, that's what you're going to say. I believe, therefore, I have I spoken. But once that you understand God's word, he says the old man have been crucified, but the body of sin. You see, before you get saved, you have specialized in sin. You are special. You are, some of us have been recruiters. Some, some of us that... We, so there is a body, just like a person maybe who's a lawyer or somebody, a teacher or whatever, you have a body of work. This is what I've done for 40 or 50 years. Well... I've got so many years of sin. And so that body of sin has to be destroyed. But the only way it's destroyed is through me re reprogramming my mind. And so that's why that is so detrimental if we come and we spend all our time singing songs. I need my mind. The Bible says, uh, give me Romans 12 real quick, please. Romans 12. And this is not a new, this is not a new problem. Every human being that has ever come has had the same problem. Because if you are born, you are born a child of Adam. And if you, if God blesses you and you can humble yourself, then you, your mind can be reprogrammed where you can enjoy the life that God meant for you to enjoy. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, and it's just God's mercy that if, we, if you're saved, it's by God's mercy. The only thing that can keep you from being saved is by you thinking you can save yourself. When you finally come to the understanding that there's nothing that you can do in order to save yourself, that is when you throw yourself upon the mercy of God. That is when you, 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 you understand that the only way I'm going to ever be right with God is not by me keeping these laws, but by me accepting what Jesus did upon the cross, uh, his shedding his blood on my behalf and purchasing my redemption. When I come to that place, but that place is a place of humility. That place is a place of humiliation because none of us want to feel like that we are defeated. You ever had, when you was little, somebody get you down and tell you, say, say, uncle? You almost want to just kill me before I ain't going to know I'm not going to say it. And we're taught that, especially as Americans, we're taught don't give up. But you see, God's ways are not our ways. And so in order for me to get, be saved, I have to give up. And that's the reason that it's so hard for young folk. 
And I really don't have a young people's ministry. Because then what you want me to do is give them hot dogs and, and, and sing them uh, uh, contemporary songs and make, and make them have a good time. Or whatever. Getting saved ain't about having a good time. Getting saved is about dying to self. Because the very thing that we love is what's making our life miserable. And that's self. And every one of us loves self. Because every one of us like to have our way. Mm -hmm. We have three folks in the car. We need three folks in the house. We need three cars. We need three cars. You got three folks in the house. We need five TVs. <laughs> well, I can do what I want to do. Amen. That's what the very thing I love is what's holding me back. And that's self. So he says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. He gave these gifts to the church in order to help the saints, to perfect the saints. And what do I need to perfect in? I need perfecting what I believe. You know how hard it is for, to, 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 for, for a person to accept grace? And the reason it's so hard to, to accept grace is because uh, it's, it's hard not to have confidence in your flesh. You mean to tell me? I've seen it so many times. I went to rehab, alcohol rehab. I went to drug rehab. I went to rehab seven times. Seven times. And the reason was I couldn't give up. They kept telling me that I could not help myself. They kept telling me that I couldn't stop. I couldn't get rid of it and everything. I'm looking at them sideways. I'm saying, I ain't like y'all. I went to college. I pledged Omega Sci Fi. My mom and daddy were school teachers. I ain't no bomb. I ain't no alcohol like y'all. But you know what? In the end, I said, you know what? I thought I was different from the next person that was an alcoholic. I said, you know what? I'm an alcoholic with a couch, and he an alcoholic without a couch. We both drunks. We both can't stop drinking. My wife had to help me with that, you know, because I was talking to me. She was like, I'm like, maybe them people, I ain't thinking about them folk. Them folk up in there smoking cigarettes, you know, because I'm, you know, sanctified, but I'm smoking crack. Uh, <laughs> them folks up in there smoking cigarettes and cussing and all that and everything. She said, one thing about it, they ain't smoking no crack. I said, well, baby, you know, they, 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 they bombed. They ain't done this and they ain't done that. I, I don't bought a car. I buy a car every couple She said, hold on, Donna. She said, I bought them cars. You ain't bought no car in about. Well, see, God can't help you till you, till you see the truth. And I ain't talking about the truth about me. I'm talking about the truth about yourself. And as long as we have confidence in our flesh and who we think we are, God cannot help us, can't assist us. So he says, be, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We started out this thing right, right talking about how God works. God the Father works through the Son. The Son works through the Spirit. The Spirit works through the, belie the believer, through the Word. And the Word works through the believer, and the believer works through faith. None of that, no kind of problem with any of that mother none. The only problem is when we get to the point of why, what the believer believes. Most churches won't even have Bible study to find out what they believe. They spend all Wednesday night with the choir. What good is doing you singing? You singing in ignorance. But you know what? What I found this out right here is you have to, you really, in, 19, in 2016, you have to be willingly ignorant. So they got something they call the World Wide Web. You can Google almost anything. You can find out if you want to find out. But, but and, you know, it's not like it used to be where you had to go to the library and you had to go through the Dewey Decimal System and all that kind of stuff that I never did. I never did get all that stuff. It's real simple now, isn't it? But now, you know, but you got to want to know. And so when I saw a mother when we was coming in and, 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 and I told her, I said, thank God for a man. Thank God for a mind to want to know. Thank God for a mind to want to not, to not be ignorant. So the Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, Brother Jeff Dodd, this is revolutionary to me 
that none of this has to do with whether I go to hell or not. None of it has to do with that. I get to go to heaven because I believed in the death, burial, and resurrection, and the Spirit of God baptized me into the body of Christ, so I'm saved. Now, I might not believe I'm saved because the preacher told me because I listened to this kind of music, uh, I wore these kind of shoes, uh, 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 I, I had an earring in my ear, uh, this right here, he might tell me, say, you done backslid it and you're not known and you're going to, you know, I might think I'm going to hell, but I'm saved because salvation is a work of God. Okay. Ephesians, the second chapter in the eighth verse says you're saved by grace. And grace means that it has nothing to do with you. God says, I'm not going to let you. You done messed up everything. I'm not going to let you mess up my salvation. And so this is all me. So you're saved by grace through faith. I have to furnish the faith in order to be saved. He, he, he did the grace. What was the grace? Some people say God's riches at Christ's expense. So then God worked through the son. The son went to the cross, and he, he paid. The price was his blood. He paid the price. And so my salvation was was was. Uh, paid for before I ever got here. I had to furnish the faith. When I believed it, the day I believed, God saved me. But now what I needed was, I needed a teacher in order to perfect my faith. So, I could prove what was the good and acceptable, perfect will of God. Go back to Galatians 1. I want to talk about three things in the remaining time that we have. Uh, the first part I want to talk about is the gospel under siege. The gospel under siege. What is the gospel? The gospel is good news. It's good news. What does under siege mean? That means that Satan does not want the gospel to be known. He doesn't want the gospel to be known. Because if the gospel is known, then a person can believe it. I told you Galatians, right? Turn to 2 Corinthians 4th chapter. And this ain't brain surgery, y'all. This is all I need right here. I'm a very emotional person. I jump, shout, dance, all that. And I, I know I do that. I'm going to do it. And I don't need to be around y'all to do it. When I think about the goodness of the Lord and all he's done for me, I don't need no organ. I don't need no, I promise you I don't. I promise you I don't. Because Jesus is real to me. He's real to me. Look what he says down in the fourth, in the third verse. Paul says, but if our gospel be hid, the gospel under siege, and the gospel is hid. Because you ask folks, what is the gospel? You know, and, and half of them don't even know what it is. What are you doing in church? Y'all say in church five hours and you come out and don't even know what the gospel is. He said, but if our gospel be hid, what does hid mean? That means that it, it is concealed from your view. So Paul says, if our gospel be here, it is here to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world, that's a little g, right? The God of this world, who is that? That's Satan. The God of this world, what has he done? Blinded the minds. Blinded the minds. Have you ever talked to somebody about the gospel? I'm talking about church folk. And they just couldn't see it. Folk really worried about us and paying tithes. They really worried about us. Like they really worried that we're going to go to hell if we don't pay. You know, what you talking about? Y'all ain't taking no, y'all ain't taking no offering or nothing like that. That man going to send y'all to hell. Y'all are oh, you holding God's money. But you see, that's when the God of this world have blinded. See, you have confidence. You think. You still believe. And some of the people are saved. Not, not that they're not saved. But they really believe that it's something that you can do in order to make God like you or be in good standing with you. 
And that's the reason the gospel is under siege because, you see, the only thing that God would accept was the blood of his son. Paul says later on in Galatians, say, it's evident that no man is justified by the works of the law. Y'all, that's very simple. It's a lot of things in the Bible I don't understand. They're just too deep for me to, I just, God hadn't revealed them to me yet. But I understand that. When he says that it is evident that the works of the law, no man is justified. So he says here, he says, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. Believe what? Believe the gospel. How can you believe something when you don't even know what it is? You believe the sound, I believe the choir sound real good. Ooh, that choir was good today. Ooh, my preacher, he preached, oh man, that man can preach, oh Lord have mercy. Well, you know what? I can pretty well tell how good your teacher is by what you know. And if you don't know nothing, your teacher ain't that good a teacher. Because the purpose of the teacher is to communicate what he knows to you. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe he don't know nothing. He says, but to, in whom the godless word have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Wasn't it a blessing when you were taught and when you realized that your salvation was tied up only in what Christ did and not what you do? That you, you, had, you could stop hypocriting? And you could stop justifying your actions and, and whatever. Because what that does is it makes you uh, uh, judgmental about other folks. But when you realize that each and every one of us, if we are saved today, we are saved by grace and not by what we do, not the music that we listen to, not what we did, yet, not what we're going to do tomorrow, but we are only saved by Christ's sacrifice upon the cross. Turn to Galatians 1. The gospel under siege. If we get to it, which I don't think we will. The second thing would be, let's see, the gospel under siege. A testimony of grace. And the third thing would be a gospel worth fighting for. Have you noticed that when you know the real gospel, you will fight about it? When I say fight, I'm not talking about with your hands or nothing like that. But what I'm saying is, is that when you know the truth, can't nobody move you from it. They can talk about you. They can shun you. They can put you or put, leave you alone or whatever. You say, well, I'm, I'm not changing from that. You know, I'm, I'm sorry that you don't understand it. I'm sorry that you don't believe it or whatever. But the light of the glorious gospel has shined under me. And I understand now. That I only have one person to thank for my salvation, and that's Christ for what he did. It ain't the pastor. It ain't the bishop. It ain't the church. It, it ain't my mama or nobody. It was Jesus that went up Calvary's cross and died in my behalf. And when he did it, he did a perfect work. I can't mess it up. Paul says in the third verse, he said, Grace be unto you and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Look what Paul says here. Galatians 1, verses 1 through 10. I want to talk about a gospel under siege. Paul says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him. Now, Mother Nun, in order for that to happen, there has to be something in man because each and every one of us, well, I won't say that. I'll say most of us were moved. When God saved us, we were light. We felt like we wanted to tell everybody about it. We felt perfectly forgiven. We felt clean. We felt uh, 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 brand new. But it wasn't but a few days that we got all burdened down again. And we was trying to get saved all over again. But wasn't no more salvation. The Bible says in Hebrews, it talks about Jesus' sacrifice. Hebrews 8 and 9. And there's no, no longer sacrifice for sin. 
Jesus is not going back to the cross again. And so what I have to do, Mother Brewer, I, my mind has to be reprogrammed to understand what he did. Because how many know that until you know the value of something, you can't appreciate it? Do you have people in your life like that now? I talked to the guy I talked to today. He said, he said, Vandal, he said, you're blessed to have a mom and dad. He said, my daddy died when, my mama died when I was 32. My daddy died when I was five. And no doubt that he didn't know the value at 32 of having a mother. Until you know the value, you really can't appreciate. So uh, he says, I'm amazed that you so quickly, that you so soon removed from him that called you into the grace. What verse am I on? Verse 6 of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Does that go back to 2 Corinthians 4, where it says that if this gospel be hid, it's hid to the the God of this world have blinded the minds, you know? And that's the reason I thank God for settings like this. I try to get people at the church. I say, y'all, come to Wednesday night. I say, Sundays is fun, but I really like Wednesdays better because you get more out of this. On Sunday, people so hurt and pop wounded and whatever you just got to just wrap back and just tell them the lord will make a way but actually in wednesday nights we can calm down and just talk and about how our mind needs to be reprogrammed because once your mind becomes program reprogrammed then when the situations come up you know how to handle situations which used to mess you up because once that you believe the true gospel, then you're going to be out of step with about 99% of Christendom. Because 99% of Christendom has believed another gospel. They'll say they believe that you're saved by grace. Then they add, Sister Sheila, a but to it. But you got to pay your tithes. And this is one of their favorite ones right here. But you got to live right. And you know, the thing about that is, what is live right? What, what, what you mean by live right? Because I don't care how perfect you think you are. I don't have to go no further than your children to find out you ain't perfect. You ain't perfect. And this is one thing that we do, uh, our brother Carl Ray. Well, you know, I'm doing the best I can. How is that perfect doing the best you can? You know, if God's grace is not sufficient, then every one of us is going to hell. I understand that. Because now I do pretty good. You know, that I was talking to a guy in the barbershop the other day, and I shouldn't he, he brought me into it, Fairy. But they were talking about Steph Curry and everything. You know, Steph Curry supposed to be a Christian and all that. But then when LeBron them got on him, he went to cussing out there, right up there in front of all them folks. And I just said, I shouldn't have I said, he shouldn't have done that. And they said, why he shouldn't have done that? I said, well, because he was professing to be something. And then, with the, well, I think that you know that whatever, if, if, uh, if uh, anybody, I said, young man, I said, you ought to speak for yourself. I said, you can't speak for me. I don't care what I'm going through. I'm not going to cuss. I ain't cussed in 27 years. I just ain't going to cuss. It just ain't in me. I've done some other things. But that, I just, that just, I don't do that. You, you see what I'm saying? So, I don't, I don't even know where that came from. Where that from. <laughs> he says, when I see the tape later, I'll remember where I was going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, so now I'm not cussing, but Lord have mercy the other stuff I do. Lying. I, bet lying, I told you, I told you, okay. Oh, uh, if you ask me the right question, you got a lie coming right now. While I'm teaching and preaching you. All right. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So, De Lady Deborah, I never was really even taught the real gospel. God just saved me, 
But I was in a church that that's what they taught was just work salvation. They told me that the way I got saved was is that I got tired of doing sin. And so I gave my life to God. I made Jesus the Lord of my life. I turned my back on sin. And now I made my decision to be a saint and to live right. None of that was true, but they sure gave me a lot of credit. And if anything we like, it's credit. Because it was true now, the cussing and smoking and drinking and, and all that was gone. So I said, they must know what they're talking about. So it was very easy for me to believe another gospel. As we said now, so, so I say again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which you have received, let him be accursed. Look what he says in verse 10. For do I now persuade men of God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. I never got so much pushback. I never got so much uh, uh, um, hatred, even from my family and from folks that was close to me, till I started preaching this gospel. And I was amazed, Brother Jeff. I thought that they would be happy to find out what I had found out. But they said, no, they, they treated me like you the devil. You teaching these people this stuff right there? And, and the thing about it is, a, a preacher that I love, you know, poor thing, he's sick, can't even see your things. But, you know, but he ran, going around telling people, he said he's sending them people to hell. And, you know, if I did not know better, that would be something that would crush you. To think that you out here teaching and, and sending folk to hell. I ain't sending none of y'all to hell. If you're going because you want to go. I know that and he know it too. He says, look at verse 11. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which is preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Verse 13. Then he goes on. After he talks about the gospel being under siege, the gospel, and y'all, that's something that's very common. Out of all the things that you see in so-called church, that's the thing that they have desecrated, and that's the gospel. Because they have added on to the blood of Jesus. Hardly anybody will preach that the only thing that saves is Jesus' blood. I had a woman, she came here for because she came to a funeral. I guess they like the way I preach until they hear what I say. I don't understand that because you got to hear what I say in order to like what I preach. So I don't know. But anyway, I was preaching at the funeral and shoot, it was a gang of them. But one Sunday, about eight of them came. They was all back there. I got to, y'all need to come hear this man. And um, she came a Sunday or two. Next thing I know, it says she, she stopped coming because she said they ain't, they ain't having circumcision. She said, no, I mean, it's juice and crackers. You can, you can get them anytime you want to. I mean, if that's all it was and everything, I, I, you know, I think we got some left back there. I gave you some. If that's all, is that it? You see what I'm saying? But they wouldn't, she wouldn't even come to me and talk to me. For, to give me an opportunity to explain if that's what you want uh, or whatever. I ain't got no problem giving it to you, but I want you to know that you done had enough juice and crackers. That ain't your problem. Your problem is your mind. The reason that you ain't got no peace at your house, the reason you and your husband can't stay together, the reason that your children can't stand you. Do you know most folks go to church, they chill. That's the come the children don't go to church no more. They can't stand y'all because, because you're so hard and so, you see, Thank you, Jesus. But that's what happens from the flesh. And we're going to learn this as we go on into Galatians. Galatians is a great book. Whenever you are operating out of the confidence in yourself, there's certain things you're going to become hateful, you're going to become judgmental. But when you understand grace and you understand that you cannot have any confidence in yourself and you put self aside and God's spirit begins to work through you, the fruit of the spirit is love and joy and peace and kindness. You can start being kind to folks. That's what people need. People don't need you telling them what they need to do and all that. You know, leave here sometime. I'm sure you do. Leave here sometime and just make a tour of the church. Ain't nobody going to church, y'all. 
people tithe. It's just like a bill going to church. He says, for you have heard of my conversation in time past. I got three minutes. In the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure, I persecuted the church of God and wasted and profited in the Jews' religion above many of my equals in my own nation. God is so good, Alexis, that he wouldn't let me profit in the religion. If they had, if those folks in the Church of God in Christ had accepted me and they had promoted me and, and made me, I wouldn't be up here now. I wouldn't be up here now. Because all of that is what I wanted and all of that is what I like. But they couldn't stand me. They, couldn't, they wouldn't put up with me. They, when they, they promoted my wife over me. <laughs> they tried to. My wife told me, I never blame a wise woman. Devil right told me, see, y'all can keep all that. Y'all think I'm crazy? You gonna promote me over my husband? My husband is the head, Lord. I, Lord have mercy. I wasn't nothing either. I wasn't nothing. And she, she, she just lifted me up. And I know they were looking at her like, you, you talking about this worthless? But I'm gonna tell you what. That's why she's so blessed today. I want you to know that. I keep so blessed. I, I asked her yesterday, I asked her yesterday, Brother, uh, Brother King, I said, ain't you glad that you didn't let nobody make you leave Papa? She said, I sure am. <laughs> hey. You got to have some help. God got to help you. So after Paul talks about the gospel on the siege, he gets personal and he talks about a testimony of grace. I said, look, I was doing good in the, in the Jews' religion. I profited above many of my equals. People that, he said, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my father. But look what happened to him in verse 15. Thank God for Paul. Paul said, but when it pleased God, it didn't have nothing to do with him. Because he thought that he was right. But he said, but when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, not by my works, not by my position, but he called me by to reveal his son in me. And that's what's happened to me since I've been over here at Manasseh. God has revealed his son in me. I had never been taught right. But when I got the right teaching, I've been going a thousand ever since, that I might preach him among the heathens Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them that were, which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia, into the desert, and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter, and abode with him fifteen days. But other of the apostles saw I none, save Jesus, save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Afterwards, I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia and was unknown by faith unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in time past now preaches the faith which he once, which once he destroyed. And they glorified God in me. Clap your hands for the Lord.